Hi friends, welcome back to Faith in Arrow Homestead. My name is Jaylee and happy first day of fall. As I'm filming, it is September 23rd, which is the first day of fall. And it feels like fall outside and today Tom is out of town and I have the house to myself. I don't work today. I'm gonna clean, get out the fall decorations. It's gonna be lovely. That's actually though gonna be in a separate video. What this video is about, Tom being out of town, um, I definitely, revolve my cooking around him, I'm gonna be honest, and I think many of us wives do that. I definitely cater it to what I know he'll like and eat. Of course, I'm not gonna make something that he won't eat because then what's he gonna eat? Um, and so oftentimes a lot of the things that I enjoy, I don't make, not because he wouldn't want me to have them, but because why, why would I if he's not gonna also eat them? Then I'm making two things. Um, and so today I'm gonna take the opportunity to make a couple of things that I don't often make that I really enjoy. And for starters, we're going to make biscuits and gravy. Now I, um, it is about, it is 10 o'clock right now. I was supposed to get started on all of this way earlier. I ended up having <laughs> to do surgery on one of my chickens. She had an impacted crop. Today makes day four of her not eating anything. I've tried and tried to clear it and it would not clear. So my dad came over and he helped me. We cut open the crop and manually pulled everything out of her crop and then I sutured it closed. And um, I, I have a medical background. Um, being an x-ray tech, I'm not a doctor. I have no experience with anything like that. And it was really scary, I'm gonna be honest, but we did it. I'm not saying she's out of the woods, she's not, because now there's the chance for infection, it has to heal, she has to start drinking again. Um, and so there are still a lot of variables, but she survived the surgery, me and my dad, we did it. Um, but I say all of this because this morning was pretty traumatic. It was a wild morning. Um, and now I'm finally ready to focus on all of my tasks for the day. I haven't eaten yet. I just had a piece of toast right before my dad got here because I didn't want to do all that on an empty stomach. Um, and I'm really excited for biscuits and gravy. My very good friend Andrea is coming over at noon in two hours to spend some time with me and I want to be able to feed her. So let's go ahead and make biscuits and gravy, one of my absolute favorite breakfast staples. I have been fresh milling my own flour, um, but I'm so hungry and just want to get into this. So I am going to use all purpose flour for these recipes. I'm using recipes from the salty marshmallow.com and um, I'm using both their gravy recipe as well as their drop biscuit recipe. We're actually going to start with the biscuits because I know the gravy comes together pretty quickly. So the biscuits can be baking while we are making our gravy. So to a bowl, I'm going to add two cups of all-purpose flour, one tablespoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of sugar, half a teaspoon of salt. Her recipe says to add half a teaspoon of garlic powder, but I'm actually going to omit that because I any biscuits that I have left over, I would like to eat with butter and jelly, and so I don't want that garlicky flavor. I just want a plain biscuit. I'm gonna go ahead and get all of that nice and combined. Um, before I forget, I need to go ahead and preheat my oven. I, I should have done that to start with. This recipe has the oven preheated to 425 degrees. I'm gonna trade out my whisk for a big spoon and I'm going to drizzle in half a cup or one stick of, I'm assuming probably unsalted butter. It doesn't specify, but we added salt. Um, I'm pretty sure my butter is salted. It's fine. I never care about that. I think some people are more sensitive to salt than others. I really, really love salt and I love salty things. So anytime that happens, I don't, I don't cry over it. We're also going to add three fourths a cup of milk and mix to get that all combined. I'm assuming this will probably be a pretty sticky dough. I think drop biscuit dough is usually pretty sticky. All right, you guys, and now I've got a baking sheet with some parchment paper, and with these being drop biscuits, you literally just drop some of the dough. It doesn't have to be pretty. In fact, I like when it's not. I love the rustic look of a drop biscuit, and I'm just gonna take it down through here, and I also like a nice hefty biscuit, so um, the recipe says to drop it by the tablespoonful. Uh, this is not quite that, but I love a, a good hefty biscuit, so. Did you see how quickly this came together? Even with me filming, I think this took from beginning to now, I think seven minutes. Cooking from scratch does not have to take a long time. I want biscuits and gravy, I, I have a hankering, and I'm going to make it completely from scratch, and the biscuits took seven minutes, crazy. 
Um, so my oven's not quite preheated yet. As soon as it is, I'll pop these in there for nine to 11 minutes, the recipe says. I, you've heard me say my oven runs hot, so I'll check them at seven minutes and see what they look like. Next, we're going to move on to making our sausage gravy. Uh, I don't have any breakfast sausage right now. I only have Italian sausage, so that's going to change the flavor a little, but it's still going to be delicious, and I'm still going to proceed with that. So this recipe also comes from the salty uh, marshmallow. So we're going to move over to the stove, and I'm going to make this sausage gravy in my cast iron skillet. So first, we're going to add our sausage and brown it in our skillet over medium heat. Next, we're going to add two tablespoons of butter and melt it. Then we're going to sprinkle one third cup flour over the sausage and butter mixture, and we're going to stir it for a couple of minutes. We wanna cook out the flavor of that flour. Next, we're going to pour in three cups of milk slowly, and we are going to be whisking constantly while we do this. You're, you're, you still have the heat on, it's going to thicken, as you stir it, but you have to make sure you continue to whisk it. At this point, we can add our seasonings. I'm going to add some salt, a little bit of black pepper, a little bit of garlic powder, and some seasoned salt that I have. At this point, you can turn off the heat, make sure everything is combined nicely, and it'll continue to thicken as it cools. And we have some delicious breakfast sausage gravy in just a few minutes. Here are our biscuits. I definitely could have kept them in a little longer to get more of a golden brown, but I like my biscuits and gravy biscuits to be soft and pillowy and fluffy, and I don't really want crunch, and so I took them out after 10 minutes. I do wanna add that with the gravy, I actually only added two cups of milk. I was stirring, whisking it and watching it thicken. I've made gravy before, so I know at what speed it usually thickens, and it just wasn't, after two cups, I was like, I don't think this needs a third cup. So as it cools, it'll thicken more. And if I find that it is just way too um, thick with the missing cup of milk, then I'll just slowly add, like I'll warm it back up and slowly add more milk. You can always do that. Um, but I stopped at two cups and I just wanted to mention that. So let's go ahead and build the plate here. I had a couple of our biscuits here and then scoop on some of our delicious gravy. I am so excited to have this first bite. I'm so hungry. Um, I am gonna go ahead and eat this. I have two more hours until Andrea gets here um, and we probably won't eat as soon as she gets here. So let's say two and a half hours. Um, I can't wait that long. I'll have a second serving when she gets here. And oh gosh, how terrible would that be, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. Like I said, the Italian sausage throws it off a little bit, but it's still super good. And I'm so excited. This is such a great thing to have on this channel because this is a wonderful example. I know I already said it, but I just want to reiterate of how quickly things can come together. It not Cooking from scratch does not mean that you're going to spend hours and hours in the kitchen making all these elaborate meals. You can. You can do that. I do that sometimes. But... There are recipes and ways out there to make something that's delicious, that you want, that your family wants, and it not take long. Even with me filming, this took 20 minutes to throw together homemade, from scratch, biscuits and gravy. It, it doesn't all have to be so difficult. Mm. All right, friends, so obviously for lunch I had biscuits and gravy. When Andrea came over, I had a second helping with her, and that was lovely. So now I want a little bit of a snack. It is about 4 o'clock, so I'm not going to eat dinner till closer to 7. When I'm home alone, I find I eat really late. I'm not really sure why that is, but I ate, I ate last night at like 9.30. <laughs> so I probably won't eat until 7, so I want a little snack. I am actually going to make, and I'm really excited about this, apple fritters. So when I cut seed oils out of my diet, I gave up donuts because donuts are fried in oil. And um, 
likely a canola oil or a vegetable oil of some kind. And so I don't consume them. I haven't in months and months. And I love donuts. My favorite donut being apple fritters. I love them. And so I found a recipe on Pinterest and we're going to give it a try and I am going to fry them in lard. I have leaf lard that I rendered earlier this year and I use it occasionally, but um, I'm going to use it now to make apple fritters. And this will be really fun because you can keep the lard and continue using it over and over again. So um, I'll have it. So maybe I could do like some French fries or something. I don't, I don't know, but I'm really excited to try my hand at frying something because I've completely cut fried foods out of my diet because you can't go out in public and, and get them because they are fried in vegetable oil, canola oil, corn oil, all of those nasty, disgusting seed oils. And so um, I'm gonna try doing it myself. So I have a large bowl here, and to that large bowl, we're going to add a cup and a half of all-purpose flour, one tablespoon of sugar, two teaspoons of baking powder, half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, can't have the first day of fall without a little cinnamon and a pinch of nutmeg. So I'm just gonna do a little bit. So I'm gonna give that all a stir here. Now in a smaller bowl, we're going to add two eggs. Ooh, I'm really lucky that that was the first egg that I cracked because look, I've got a bad one. That is a bad egg, icky, icky, icky. And then just because I don't want to tempt fate, I'll crack the second one in a separate bowl. Yeah, that's fine. We're also going to add two thirds a cup of milk. I'm gonna add a little bit of vanilla. Normally I think I would add more than this, but this is what's left of this jar. So I'm just gonna pour what's in here. This is gonna be, this is probably like the best little bit of vanilla because look at all that vanilla bean that's in there. Oh my gosh. Tasty, tasty, tasty. Yes. Oh, these are going to be so yummy. Lastly, we're going to add one tablespoon of melted butter. We'll go ahead and get that mixed together. Oh, having all those little specks of vanilla bean in here makes me so happy. These are going to be so tasty. All right, and lastly, we pour the wet ingredients into the dry ingredients. So the next step is to add in your apple. Here's the thing, I love apple fritters. They're one of my favorite desserts. However, I hate biting into an apple fritter and getting just a big mouthful of nasty, mushy apple. But you guys already know, I don't really like fruited desserts because I don't like mushy fruit. So I can't very well have an apple fritter without the apple. Could I? Yes, <laughs> I could just not put any apple in it. It's a little chaotic if you ask me. So we're gonna try, what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna grate my apple using this grater. And then I think if I were to end up with grated pieces of apple versus chunks of apple, maybe I would enjoy it more. So let's give that a shot and see. Okay, I'm actually really happy with how that turned out. There's not a ton in here, but there's enough that I can still call this an apple fritter. <laughs> some apple in there. But I definitely think these grated pieces will be a lot easier for me to eat than those big old nasty chunks. Let's move over to the stove. Okay, so I have leaf lard that I rendered in my crock pot, but it's been in the freezer because if you store your leaf lard in the freezer, it stores indefinitely. I'm not sure how I'm going to get it out. <laughs> I'm going to see if I can just very carefully carve out some but here's the thing you need quite a bit when you are frying you need like an inch or two of oil so i need quite a bit of this so i'm just going to work on carving out as much of this as i can but i think it's going to be pretty slow going here <laughs> All right, I was able to carve out quite a bit here, so let's go ahead and let get this warming up and we'll see precisely how much we have and if we need to add any more. But I'm getting really excited for these apple fritters. 
you want your oil to reach 350 and mine's more than 350 it's crawling into the 360s 370s so I'm gonna lower my heat a little bit by the way I did add a little bit more um, leaf lard but not much so I can see that my cast iron is smoking a little bit so let's go ahead and put our first fritter in there and I'm just gonna take a big huge spoonful And I'm just going to do one for the first one just so I can get a feel for it. I'm kind of crouched down here so that I can be in the frame, but I don't want to get splattered, so I'm going to back up a little bit. Well, they definitely don't look like traditional apple fritters. They look like pancakes. They didn't do that bubbly thing. And I have no idea what causes that in the first place. So I don't know how to replicate it. Um, but they smell so good. My house smells like fall right now and it's amazing. So these need to cool. And while they're cooling, let's make our glaze. All right, so you need two cups of powdered sugar. I don't think I quite have two cups here, but this is the rest of my powdered sugar. So you know what, I figure this container needs to be cleaned. I'm just gonna go ahead and keep my powdered sugar in here and just use this container to make my glaze. Then it says you need a fourth a cup of milk, but I'm gonna be honest guys, and I've said before that I don't like doing this and it's true that I don't, but because I'm not really sure how much powdered sugar I have here, I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it and go from there. You also need two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Again, I'm gonna eyeball it. So this is my new thing of vanilla extract. I made this three, three months ago, I wanna say, and it's just been chilling in my cabinet. So I'm gonna go ahead and start using it because it's all I've got. These have not been cooling that long, but I am impatient and I really wanna try one. So let me find one that's semi-cool. This one is, so I'm gonna just break off a piece of it. This is what it looks like on the inside. Yum, 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 oh. And I'm just gonna drop her in. Get her coated with the glaze. Ah, I have an apple fritter. <laughs> I have wanted one of these for months. It may not look much like it on the outside, but the inside does have those like bubbles and little nooks and crannies that you get from a traditional apple fritter. This is so good. The mouth feel, it's very like light and puffy. Excuse me, so good. Mm. I cannot believe I just made apple fritters. Okay, now the question is, what do I want for dinner? I've already decided I'm actually not going to make anything and I'm going to treat myself to something. So the question is, do I want sushi or do I want pho? Pho is a traditional Vietnamese soup. I think it's Vietnamese. Um, I, if you've never heard of it, Google it. It's so good. Sushi is more expensive. Pho is farther away. I definitely think those I'm between those two things. Like nothing else comes to mind as sounding like really, really good. Is it bad that I want both? <laughs> I actually, so we have a store here called Wegmans. You've heard me mention it a million times. Um, if you've been around here a little while, it's the equivalent to our like uh, Kroger or what are some of the other, um, I can't think of any other like grocery stores. Um, but Wegmans, 
is the bee's knees they rock and so they have like um they have a um a bakery they have a sub shop they have a pizza place a sushi place all inside the store and so their sushi is actually really good for being grocery store sushi they actually hire people and like train them in the art of sushi and um they make it fresh every day um and they you can actually like go up to the counter and like order specific like types of sushi and stuff so i might get a small thing of sushi maybe just like a tuna roll or something and also get some pho and just live my best life tonight <laughs> so actually while i have you i want to speak candidly with you for a moment i had said in the beginning of this video that i was also going to film a fall clean and decorate and that's what i was supposed to do today and I just have not been able to bring myself to do it. And I'm being very careful with this channel. Like, yes, I want to put in the work and create the, the content and do the things. But I also don't want to force myself into something when I'm feeling uncomfortable. Here's what's going on. So if you've been around for a little while, you've heard me talk about Cheeto. Cheeto is our orange domestic short haired house cat. And he's, uh, I think he's probably six years old now. And he um, has kidney failure. He actually has been dealing with it for about a year now. And Tom and I think he's kind of towards the end of this journey. Um, and what's happened is he can no longer control his bladder. So he has been using the bathroom all over our house. Specifically for some reason in the living room. The room that I'm in right now where we have our couch and our TV and spend all of our time. And this carpet is new. We've been in this house almost four years and we installed it the win that first winter that we were in this house. So the carpet's not even four years old and he has demolished it. It absolutely demolished it. And like, I hate to even like say this out loud, but our house smells like cat pee and it's bothering me so very much. And it's bothering Tom really bad. Um, we like are embarrassed to have people over. I'm lucky right now that we're in the time of year where I can have all the windows open to help kind of diffuse the smell a little bit. Um, it's just really gross and really difficult to like live with, not to sound dramatic, but we don't have the money right now to rip up this carpet and replace it. So I'm not really sure what the solution is. We have cleaned it and 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 cleaned it. And it just smells so bad. So two things. Cheeto is now an outside kitty, which sounds really terrible. And I might catch some flack for this, but I'm just being honest with you guys. Cheeto... Tom and I weren't sure what to do because we... Everybody keeps telling us to euthanize him. Even his vet said to euthanize him. But here's the problem. He's still completely normal. He's eating. He's drinking. He purrs when you pick him up. He rubs against your legs. He plays with our other cat. He's still completely normal, except his kidneys are failing. So it was very difficult for us to justify putting him to sleep when he's still acting like himself. And he's not in any pain. He just pees a lot. He drinks a lot of water and he pees a lot because his kidneys are failing. Um, and so we, th the, I know that this all sounds so terrible and I'm sorry. We threw around the idea of taking him to a local shelter, but I told Tom, I said, if we take him, it's, we don't have any no kill shelters here. I don't think so. If we took him to our most popular, biggest one, they would euthanize him just like the vet told us to euthanize him. So I told Tom, I said, I don't really th personally think that's an option. I'm not ready to euthanize him. I'm not going to just take him somewhere else and have them euthanize him because if that's the case, we should just do it. So I said, you know, what's the solution here? We, we're not taking him anywhere. We can't leave him in the house. We have to do something with him. So we decided to have him be an outside kitty. However, here's what we did. We have something called a breezeway. It's a non-temperature controlled um entry it's like you walk into the breezeway and then you walk from there into the into the house it's not temperature controlled but it stays pretty mild in there in the winter it's not too cold and in the summer it's not too hot not temperature controlled but decent there's a bunch of windows there's a fan in there and stuff 
And from there, there's a door leading out onto the back patio from the breezeway. And we have a doggy door installed in that door for Benny. Um, and we've trained Cheeto to use that doggy door. So he's an outdoor cat with access to the breezeway. And the breezeway is where we have his food and his water. We're going to get him a little kitty house or bed or something in there for the winter time. Um, and so far, our backyard's completely fenced. It's been about a week and a half since we did this. And he's just hanging out in the backyard. He's just walking the perimeter of the fence, chasing birds and living his best little outdoor kitty life. Uh, sleeps on the patio furniture. When I go outside, he greets me and rubs against my legs and I pet him and hold him. We, we treated him for flea and tick. Um, so I don't love it because he's not an outside cat. He's never been an outside cat. And I don't love that we've made him an outside cat, but I don't, I did not see any other solution. We cannot just let him continue to destroy our house. It was really, really weighing heavily on mine and Tom's mental health. It was, and so that brings me to the second thing. Because it reeks of cat pee in here so bad, it's really been hard for me to clean the house and to get excited about decorating and all that because why? My house smells like pee. What's the point? And that sounds so stupid to say out loud, but like that's kind of where my head is at. Like, why would I bring out the fall decorations when my house smells like cat pee? Like, what? what's the point? So I think we're either going to get it professionally, like have pay someone to come and professionally clean it, or I've been doing the Dave Ramsey, so I don't believe in debt, but we may just put it on a credit card and get this carpet replaced because it's getting really... Once we close up the house and we can't have the windows open anymore and we have to turn on the heat, I just don't see it happening. I just don't see us being able to to stand it. It really, it's, so I just wanted to kind of tell you, because I said at the beginning of this video that I was going to film that, and I just don't think I'm going to. And to be honest, I don't think I'm going to decorate. I'm just not feeling it. Um, I have been cleaning all day today and that's been nice. It's been making me feel better, but I don't think I'm going to. I don't think I'm going to decorate. So you know what though? That's okay because what I have other, I have two videos on my channel already of me decorating for fall. So maybe I'll link to those on my Instagram. What I don't have on my channel is a video of me cleaning and decorating for Christmas. And I love decorating for Christmas. So maybe this year I'll do that instead. I will um, clean and decorate for Christmas and I'll film that and make it a vlog for you guys. So anyway, I'll let you know what I end up deciding for dinner. All right, I'm back. I'm changed into my comfy clothes. I've got my food and I am ready to relax for the rest of the night. And the rest of my projects that I wasn't able to finish um, today, I will finish tomorrow and it's gonna be just fine. So <laughs> I accidentally called the wrong restaurant. There are two with the same name and I didn't know that. And so thank goodness the woman, um, at the end of our conversation, she was like, okay, see you in 10 to 15 minutes at this location. And I was like, oh my, thank you for saying that. When I got there, I was like, thank you for saying that because I would have gone to the wrong one and it would have been very frustrating. So she saved me. Um, but because of that, I ended up having to drive even farther than I already was going to have to drive to pick this up. So it was worth it though. I had a lovely conversation with a homeless man. She was very lovely. It was great. Um, but because of it, I did not go to get sushi because I was going to have to go to another place to get the sushi. So I just have my pho. Oh. Mm. Wow, that's good. So this is the soup base. And then when you take it to go, they give you all of the stuff in a separate container. And a little thing of hoisin. I love hoisin. Oh my gosh, so good. There's some a lime in here, a pepper some basil, stuff like that. Now in here are the onions and the scallions. And then the, here's the thing, the way it works is the meat is raw and the soup is so hot that it cooks it. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in all that meat and let it get cooking in the hot soup. It is a little alarming that the soup being as hot as it is is put into this plastic container. Probably not great <laughs> from a chemical standpoint which is ironic considering what I'm always telling you guys, but you know, you gotta live a little too, right? So I love the onions. Oh, love, love, love the onions. So I'm gonna put all of those in there and let them get softening up. 
And I got two different kinds of meat with this one. I got the brisket, which is in here already cooked, and the round steak, which I think is what that was that I just put in. And then at the bottom here are the noodles. So I'm gonna put that in there. Oh, yum. All right, I think that's all I can safely pack into this container without it overflowing. Let's take a bite. Oh, I love pho so much. If you've never had it before, look and see if you've got somewhere in your area that has it. Um, being in upstate New York, it's very diverse here. There's so many different kinds of food to enjoy. And I absolutely love that. I really like Vietnamese food. Um, and pho is definitely like at the top of the list. We have a friend who um, knows how to make it like from scratch and he made it for us once and it was oh so good. I love, I just love food. I love food in general, you know. So trying to get some noodles and some meat here. Mm. So I have no, I have no idea how long this video is at this point, but I want to talk to you very briefly about um, the fact that I am alone this weekend. So Tom is out of town. He's at a bachelor party and I have the house to myself. I am definitely the kind of person who enjoys alone time. I absolutely love the, my handsome Tom. Oh my gosh, I love that man with all of my heart so very much. And I love when we're together. I cherish every moment that I get with him. I do not take my handsome Tom for granted. I love him so much. But there's something to be said for having the house to yourself, especially if you're a parent. I'm sure you can doubly relate to this, but it is when it's quiet, and you don't have anybody to worry about but yourself. <laughs> and you can go about your day and do whatever you want. And you don't have to keep anybody else in mind. It's freeing. And it's nice to be able to do that every now and then, just occasionally. And I like getting the occasional space from my handsome Tom because we're together a lot. We spend, we do everything together. We spend all our time together. And it's nice to get a little separation. Um, distance makes the heart grow fonder. And I love texting and we like... Uh, send each other selfies and stuff while we're apart and it's nice. It's refreshing. It's fun and uh, And it makes me so happy to see him when I pick him up from the airport It'll be so exciting. I'll be so happy to see him and I'm so glad that he's out having fun with his friends and Experiencing new things. He's in a different state. He had to fly so he's pretty far um, And I'm so glad for him and I love I love this I love the opportunity to just relax and do whatever I want and um, he's, he's been gone, he'll have been gone um, five days, and I had to work three out of those five days. So I'm not going to have like, you know, I didn't get to completely live it up while he was gone, but it's been nice. Today was one, uh, one of the days that I, was, I had off, and it's been very enjoyable, except for the chicken surgery. <laughs> um, that was enjoyable too, I guess, but also kind of intense. She's still alive, by the way. I had my dad come over come back over because I made those apple fritters and I know that he really likes those. So I was like, stop over really quick and pick one up. So he came over. I just kind of wanted to do it as a thank you for helping me. So I gave him some apple fritters and we went down and checked on her and she was drinking. I gave her uh, molasses in her water and she was drinking. So I think that that's a really good sign. And um, I'm hopeful that she'll be okay when I see her in the morning. So, well guys, that's it. That's all I've got for you. We made biscuits and gravy. We made apple fritters. I went and got pho and I just got to chat with you a little bit and um, enjoy my alone time here at the house. And I just, I'm so grateful to you. Thank you so much for spending your time with me and for watching my videos. And I really genuinely feel like you guys are my friends. And when I talk to the camera, doesn't feel like I'm talking to a camera. It feels like I'm talking to you guys. And so I'm so grateful for you guys. I uh, can't wait to see you in my next video. Have faith, my friends, and keep moving forward. Bye.